So I'm Dan Munt. Um, that's me on Twitter. Feel free to you know yell at me, tell me I'm an idiot, tell me I'm great, uh, whatever you want to do, say hi. Um, and I work at the GSA Center for New Media and Citizen Engagement, and that's us on Twitter. Um, so that's my work. So be nicer to them than you are to me on Twitter if you want to say hi to them. Um, and so what the center strives to do is to be an incubator and accelerator uh, for government-wide new media and citizen engagement technologies, tools, practices, and policies. Um, that's kind of a mouthful, which is why you may have seen I kind of read it off the screen. Um, but the simple way to think about that is that we have three core missions, right? Uh, we try to make it easier for government to engage with people. Uh, we try to make it easier and desirable for people to engage with their government. Uh, and to the extent possible, we try to do that efficiently and effectively. Um, so try to do things once that everyone can then use. Simple. Um, an even simpler way to think about it is that we try to be a big easy button uh, for those in government who are looking to engage with citizens, uh, get feedback from the public. Uh, and here's some stuff we're working on. Uh, a lot of things on here I think you'll be kind of familiar with is just initiatives that have been kind of visible. Um, but this is a this is a, a an overview of kind of the clubs we have in our back, right? These are the things that we spend a lot of time working on, thinking about, um, and hopefully being able to provide you with some kind of good advice about. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Uh, so what was the challenge? So the case that I'm going to talk about today actually emanates from the Open Government Directive, uh, as so much of our work does these days. Um, and this is the Open Government Directive. That's it right there. Uh, and among the many things it said uh, was that agencies should create an open government plan um, they should do that in a way that engages and gets input from citizens on key questions about what's in the plan. So things from what data should we release, what do you think the quality of our data, um, all the way to broader questions like what would you like to hear us talk about more. Um, and as you'll see a little bit later, there was a requirement to do it really, really fast. And so that was the context in which OMB turned to us at GSA uh, for a platform that was government-wide, scalable, affordable, that agencies could use to conduct this engagement with citizens in a short time period. Um, we chose to use IdeaScale uh, for this particular engagement, and Rob and Vivek from IdeaScale are here, so say hi to them afterward if you want to. Um, and the reasons we chose IdeaScale uh, were low cost, uh, they have a civic pricing plan, it was quick to start up, um, and government has some experience using that platform in other cases. Now, I do want to say um, that we chose to use IdeaScale for this engagement. Um, but we like it a lot when people use other products uh, and let us know how that's going, and we're very much aware that IdeaScale is just part of a larger ecosystem, um, rich from user voices here, which is also a great product, and there are lots of great products in this space, so I really encourage you to look at those, um, but IdeaScale was the one we went with uh, this time. Um, this was kind of the timeline we had. Um, the Open Government Directive dropped uh, on December 8th. Uh, this engagement began on February 6th, so there were about two months between that. Um, it was open for about 42 days, uh, and then the government, the open government plans that it was meant to inform came out 20 days later on April 7th. Um, and for those of you who are in D.C., you'll recall that all of this was done uh, under fairly perilous conditions. Um, Snowmageddon was in full blast, and so a lot of us had potentially more free time than we really wanted to have to work on this stuff, um, but it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so here's what we did. And I want to say that, you know, I'll be throwing this word we around a lot um, as I'm talking. And when I say we, in a lot of cases here, what I really mean is we, right? Um, we worked with, you know, many, many, many agencies uh, and many people at those agencies to pull this off successfully. Uh, and it wasn't, you know, none of what we did would have been meaningful without their efforts. And I kind of like to say they were on the front lines of the engagement working with citizens. We just tried to help enable it. Um, so we set up an idea scale site that looked kind of like this um, for 22 agencies plus the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. Um, it has a lot of the features that you're kind of used to seeing on these platforms. Uh, you could share an idea or discuss ideas, vote them up or down to indicate agreement or disagreement, uh, and use some social features to spread the word, bring new voices into the conversation. Um, we love compliance. And I really mean that. We like to make stuff compliant because it makes it easier for other people to then reuse the solution. And so in this case, um, we were able to put together a PIA and privacy statement that other agencies could accept and draw on if they felt comfortable doing that. Um, we did due diligence on the IT security of the platform, um, got a clearance for the Paperwork Reduction Act for use of it there, um, got a waiver for cookies to make the user experience better and enable that kind of remember me functionality, um, and created a terms of service that's Fed friendly. Uh, with idea scale, so that was great. 
Um, we tried to bake in better. Uh, this is one of the more exciting parts of this, I think. During the lead up to this project, we said, look, this is a platform that needs to work for government. Um, and so we did a lot of work um, on accessibility uh, and 508 compliance, um, usability testing and getting feedback from the community about how it was working. Um, and obviously a lot of the policy work that I, that I talked about a second ago. And now when you use IdeaScale, um, this is the great thing about, you know, the kind of partnerships that can form between us and, and uh, you know, vendors who make these platforms. Um, anyone who uses it sees that checkbox. Um, and there's one check, government compliance. And so that we thought was really cool because it actually makes accessibility, makes the ability to turn that on into the product. Um, and that's something that we'd love to see more of. Um, we're really excited when platforms become more amenable to civic use. Uh, we worked to build a strong community. We trained over 100 moderators. Um, there were teams set up at each agency to moderate these dialogues. We created a 130-member listserv across agencies to compare notes to if it was going well. Um, and there were some after-action activities that were still uh, kind of in the middle. We shared best practices. So this was a diagram we created online. Uh, to talk to agencies about how they could handle different kinds of ideas that they saw coming in. Um, and the cool thing about this is that building on those, um, we were able to create new best practices, right? So this is a diagram uh, that someone in another agency made drawing on our diagram, but elaborating the process a little bit and actually building a workflow for their agency that they hadn't had before um, based on the diagram we had put out. Um, and they even built one about how to cycle feedback through their agency. So this was a great example of how they built capacity to do this kind of engagement by doing it. And that's a theme that I'll draw on a few times. Um, we like to show our work. So on webcontent.gov, you can find a lot of the materials that were generated by this engagement, um, legal and policy resources, all the documentation, uh, training materials, outreach tools, usability testing results. Um, and dialogue data sets. And this last piece I want to talk about, um, because, you know, IdeaScale, like a lot of platforms, has the ability to take the feedback that you've received and export it in a machine-readable format, CSV or XML. And we kind of, at one point, said to ourselves, hey, that information is information about what citizens have said they want from government. Um, and that's a high-value data set. Right, it's important that that information be public, that it be transparent, and that people be able to keep looking at that. Uh, and this is just an example of how that data set looked. I think this is uh, EPA's site, um, and every agency had this kind of data set exported. Now this is where it gets kind of cool, right? Um, because it's data like this, whether it's machine readable format or through an API um, that powers innovations like the OpenGov Tracker. Uh, this is opengovtracker.com. Uh, this is a site that actually some folks at NASA built during Snowmageddon um, that used APIs to pull from IdeaScale sites all of the data and provide a dashboard comparatively across all the sites to show how different things were going, what the top ideas were, uh, and how that went. Now the story continues because to do that, they needed an efficient way to share code to build this thing because it was all drawn open source. Um, and so they used GitHub. Right, so GitHub is a site where you can share code quickly, you can update it quickly, and it's great for developing these sort of open source tools. Um, but, you know, tools like this come back around and require things like policy, training, stuff like that. And that's the kind of thing we do. This is apps.gov, um, where we have a lot of the signed terms of service agreements that we've done with vendors that make things like GitHub easy to use. And in fact, um, NASA, I think, last week, finished negotiating a terms of service with GitHub so that they can continue that kind of engagement and other agencies can use exactly that kind of platform to do the kind of thing they did. Um, and now that's a good segue, I think, into, you know, making it easy, um, why we did stuff like that and why that's a worthwhile model to do, right? Um, so who here has either given or received this advice at some point about using social media, right? Think about strategy, think about structure, think about stakeholders, think about anything but the tool. Don't start with the tool. Um, and I think that's good advice. Um, I've given that advice. But the problem with it is that very often that's where the landmines are, right? That's the point where you make the discovery of, oh, it costs how much, or, oh, it doesn't export the data, or, oh, it captures people's social security numbers and everyone's going to freak out. Um, but that's where the blockers pop up. And that leads to what I kind of call this wicked trade-off, right? Which is there are so many hours in a day, 
Um, and you can spend those hours either working through those challenges um, or actually engaging and learning and innovating by using these tools quickly. Um, and I think, you know, no matter how many hours there are in all of our days, it's probably the case that the more you do of one, the less you're going to do of the other. And it's really easy um, for, the, for working through challenges to eat the time you have to engage and learn and innovate. And why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem because the argument that we Gov 2.0 engagement type people are trying to defend um, is not that citizen engagement is fun and exciting. Um, it's not that it's cool because it uses the internet, although the internet is great. Um, and it's not even that it gets lots of great ideas, although it's true. Um, I think the fundamental argument that we're trying to defend is that citizen engagement makes government better, right? Um, and so the question is, how do we make that true? How do we actually make it the case that as, as a result of engaging, government itself improves? Um, and so what we'd argue is that, and you know, why we try to play the role that we do is that we make that true by trying to build a virtuous cycle in government and make engagement self-sustainable. Um, what that means is that it starts with innovative ideas exposing new demand and requirements. In this case, something like the Open Government Directive, exposing the demand in agencies for a platform to engage, policy to support that engagement, training to support the use of that tool. Um, and from there, we try to provide tools and resources that are there to make the engagement easy to do so that you can spend your time innovating, learning, engaging. And that's exactly what we want agencies to do. Um, we don't want this to die kind of an engagement death where you finally check all the boxes, you do the thing, but you're so exhausted by that point, have expended so much capital trying to get it done, um, that there isn't a lot of time to focus on things like building capacity, doing something interesting, building open gov tracker, creating new workflows for your agency. Um, and eventually that, that, that learning and that experience starts to build capacity and the engagement becomes self-sustaining until the next great idea. That's the cycle that we want to build in government. Uh, and so, you know, at the outset, I called this presentation How to Engage and Why. Um, and I actually stole that from Harold Bloom, who is uh, a literary critic, who has this book, How to Read and Why, right? And what he says is that how to read is sort of the easy part, but why to read is a little bit harder. Um, and he poses the argument uh, by posing this question, until you become yourself, what benefit can you be to others? Uh, and so that seems kind of like kind of an abstract question, but we see that in this context through the lens of until agencies build the capacity to engage effectively, to learn about how you know how they do that best, to build processes, to get training, to get tools that'll do that quickly, um, what value can that engagement be to the citizens we're trying to serve? Uh, in other words, people deserve a government that's really good at listening to them. Um, they won't get that government unless we build those skills to be really good at listening to people. That's what we're trying to get to happen. So that's the why. Uh, what's next? So there's been some continued engagement, which is really cool. Um, agencies from DOT to USAID um, to GSA, my own agency, kids.gov, um, the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology have all continued using this tool um, to get feedback on entirely new topics. So in fact, it has sustained the engagement. Um, and the other nice thing about building that capacity is that it's there when you need it. Um, this is Michael Sifri tweeting about the fact that the public just sort of decided to use EPA's open government site, uh, open government engagement tool, which they elected to keep up um, as a way to crowdsource ideas for fixing the oil spill. And in fact, that is happening. So what's on tap? Um, idea scale is done. GoUSA.gov, a URL shortener um, that maintains government, uh, government authenticity of data, uh, is up now. You can go sign up for that and use it. Um, in June, we'll be releasing a citizen engagement platform, which is going to be tools that we hold and we serve to people, uh, and you and government can get a hold of very quickly, and all the policy is done embedded. Uh, and again, that's a model of getting you quickly to the engagement and the important stuff and not having to worry about the tool and the policy so much. Uh, in July 2010, we'll be doing a similar thing with a government-wide challenge platform that agencies can quickly provision um, to pose challenges uh, to citizens. That can be anything from a video contest to an apps contest to build the next prosthetic limb. 
Um, in fall 2010, there will be more challenge options and Fed space and internal collaboration platform will be opening for government. Um, and what's next is really something we want you to help us decide. Um, so my call to action here is to please keep letting us know what you can use, what would be useful, what we can try to work on. Um, and after fall 2010, we'll get right on it. Uh, the last thing I want to say <laughs> is um, that we want you to come help us build it, right? So we need uh, bright young interns, experienced, savvy detailees, and visionary creative fellows, and we're working on how um, to do that. But if you have an interest in come helping us out with some of this stuff, please let us know. Um, we have a government-wide perspective. We have kind of a labs environment where you can try out cool stuff. Um, we make a point of saying that it's okay to fail, um, you know, as long as you do it quickly and learn a lot of lessons uh, and make the next iteration better. Um, and access to tools and training uh, and smart people. And that's really true. One of the reasons that we were able to do the idea scale work that we did is because in GSA we have access to just some incredible um, lawyers and policy folks and privacy folks who really helped us get to yes on this stuff. Um, so that's what I wanted to say. Uh, thank you. And I'm going to hand it over to Peter now.